All right, how you guys doing today? Today in tap chapter 10 for circles, we're going to take a look at section 10.3, which is applying properties of chords, which leads us to our joke of the day. What do you use to tie up a package? The answer will seem pretty obvious when we get to the end of the section, but enough about that. Let's first take a look and delve into, like we have with most of the sections here, we're going to take a look at some theorems. Now this theorem says that in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if, and that's not a typo, that IFF means if and only if. In the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So based on the picture on the right, we've got arc AB is congruent to arc CD. So that's going to tell us that these two arcs right here are going to be congruent. AB and CD, that's going to be congruent only if I've got these two segments congruent. So that segment and that segment. So, so if that happens, then those two arcs are the same. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first picture here or actually our first example. We've got two of them here, A and B. Use the diagram for circle D. And I have two diagrams here just so we can kind of take a look at each one separately. Now for A, it says if AB equals 110, so I'm going to write that in because that's given information. I might need that shortly. So I'm going to write 110 right there. I'm going to draw this little piece because that's how much all of that is. I'm going to find what BC is. Well, here's what I want you to notice right back here. This segment and this segment are both the same, which means the arcs are also going to be identical. So BC, this part right here, that's also going to be the same amount as arc AB. So BC is going to be 110 degrees also. Not too bad, pretty straightforward. Now for B, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work here. Here we're told that AC is 150. So let me write that in because that's important information. So that AC, that's 150. And what I've got to do is figure out how long is this AB part. So from here to here. Now again, I know that the other part going from here to here, both of those pieces are the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with, uh, I'm going to just let a variable represent each one of those. So I'm going to let X be the number of degrees in arc AB. And then BC, since that's the same thing, that's also going to be X. Now there's a couple ways to do this, but I'm going to try the most simple way here for you. See if this all makes sense for you guys. If I were to go all the way around the outside of the circle, and this is one of the properties of circles you have to know, how many degrees are there all the way around the outside of the whole thing? Yeah, you better know. That's 360 degrees. So if I take all of my arcs around the outside, I've got X for AB plus another X for the BC part, and then I've got that 150 degrees for AC, set that equal to 360, I can figure out what the value of X is, no big deal, because now we got an algebra equation. So if 2X plus 150 equals 360, and then 2X is going to give me 210, which means X has a value of 105. Now what did X represent? It represented arc AB as well as arc BC because they're both the same. So that tells me that arc AB has a value of 105 degrees. Now that's the first theorem we're going to take a look at. Here we're going to take a look at a chord. And this chord is going to be perpendicular bisector of another chord. Then the first chord is going to be the diameter. So what that's saying is since SQ, so this piece right here, since that piece is perpendicular to TR. Now notice it's perpendicular because we've got the right angle thing going on. Then that tells me that it's the perpendicular bisector because of the way the diagram's marked. Then SQ, that piece is going to be the diameter. So that is going to be this theorem. Now take a look at our example two here. Use this diagram of circle E to find the length of AC. Now you got to be careful here. In this picture, we're told that from A to F, that amount is 7. Now that means from F to C this part is going to be 7. So a lot of times people make the mistake and go oh well that's just you know 7 but AC 
is actually this whole piece. So AC is going to be from here all the way down here. So AC is really not just going to be 7, but AC is going to have a value of 14. So just make sure that you add those two parts up correctly. All right, that's it for example two. No big deal. Just take your time. Make sure you read the question and answer that piece carefully. Two other theorems coming at you. Check these guys out. First one is going to talk about incongruent circles. Two chords are congruent if, if, if. So that's that if and only if again. They are equidistant from the center. Let's talk about that guy. So this piece right here and this piece right here. Those are the two parts that are going to be equal. So those two parts are going to be equal if a, B, and C, D are congruent. So that's this piece right here and then this piece right over here. So if those two things are the same, then E, F, and E, G are going to be the same thing. Because that's what that word equidistant means. It means it's going to be the same distance from the center of this circle, which in this case is E. Now I've got another idea here about bisecting arcs. X, Y, and Y, Z are congruent. So if the two arcs are congruent, then this point Y right here and it could be on any line, segment, or ray that contains that because sometimes you'll get pictures and it'll just keep going on and it'll extend out. But in this case, we'll just start with this simple one. Then it's going to, if Y is on that piece and it, those two arcs are congruent, then CY is going to chop that whole arc in half. So if this part, the whole arc was, say, 70, then that means each one of those pieces from y to z or y to x, each one of those arcs would be half of that. It'd be 35. All right, so more on that here in a minute. Now find the measure of the indicated arc in a diagram. Now this is pretty straightforward stuff. We've got to find arc CD. So CD, so let me highlight that piece for us. So CD is right here. So I got to get after that. DE is going to be this arc over here. So both of those arcs, and actually let me use a different color, both of those arcs, the DE arc and the CD arc, both of those have got to be the same thing, right, based on the way that our diagram is marked. And then I've got to find CE. So once I know each one of those pieces, I can just add those together. So let's just kind of get after this. I think you, you might even be able to pause this and do this on your own. So first thing I want to do, set CD and DE equal to each other. So I'll make sure that I do that. So the DE arc and the CD arc, both of those pieces are going to be the same. After I've got that set, then I just set up my equations, right? That's not a big deal. So I've got that 9x, and that's going to be equal to 80 minus x. All right, from here, you can do the arithmetic and solve for x. So go ahead and hit pause, figure out the value of x, and then let's take a look at what you come up with next. Now, how'd you do? Did you get a value of x equals 8? Hope you did. Pretty straightforward stuff. Add x to both sides, so be careful. That ends up with 10x equals 80. And divide both sides by 10, you end up with x equals 8. So, but we're not done. So CD, so to find arc CD, we've got to put 8 in for the value of x. So CD is represented by 9x, so 9x equals 72 when we plug that in. And the other arc, DE, that is also going to be 80 minus x, or that 80 minus 2. So both of those are going to be 72. So this angle right, or this arc right here is 72. And the other arc, DE, that one is 72. So if I add up those two arcs, so that's 72, and this one over here was 72. If I add up both of those, then from C all the way around to E, that's just going to be the sum of those two arcs. So 72 plus my other arc of 72. Both of those are the same. So CE, that's going to have a value of 144 degrees. And don't forget the degree symbol, little technical things there. To make sure that you're good and you rock that out. That's it for example three. We got one more example in this section. Then we're going to peace out, get back to our joke, and see what else you guys got. Ooh, check out this picture, rock stars. Wow, look at that. In this diagram of circle C, QRST equals 16. So they're telling us those two pieces right here, QR and ST, they even are nice. They marked the diagram for us. That's kind of nice. Now what we got to do is we got to find how long CU is. Well, CU is going to be this segment right here, and that's represented by 2x, so I got to find that. But what do I know since both of those are congruent, my two segments or my two chords, then these pieces are going to be equidistant, which means I'm going to just write up and set up this equation, right? CU equals CV. So I'm going to get that set up. Once I've got that set up, 
And then from here, it's just a matter of doing the arithmetic and the algebra. So you can solve that. 2x equals 5x minus 9. Then you go ahead and do some more arithmetic. You get negative 3x equals negative 9 by subtracting 5x on both sides. When you do your division, boom, chaka laka laka, you end up with getting a value of 3 for x. But you're not done yet. Because what did it ask us to do? And you got to be careful on this. Don't get sloppy and just go, oh, I got x, so I'm done. Because you're not. The problem asked us to find the value of cu. So get after that. Use that value of x, plug that into 2x, and make sure that you find the value of cu. Because then, and only then, are you done. So that's that. Take your time, do your arithmetic correctly, and don't forget to read the question and make sure you go back and you answer whatever it was. Don't just be satisfied because you got x. Sometimes the question just asks for x, and this kind, we got to plug in the x to get the value we're looking for. Now that's it for this section, so pretty straightforward stuff, but we got to do our joke of the day again, right? All right, so wrapping up our joke of the day, what do you use to tie up a package? <laughs> Silly. You just use a cord, get it? Circles, cords, ha! Huh? Funny. All right, that's it for today. I'll catch up with you guys later on. Have a great one. Peace out.